What does evolution look like? Well, you're looking at it. Here, and here, and here. These are billions upon billions of bacteria. They're breaking through ever stronger barriers of antibiotics inside a really big petri dish called the Megaplate at Harvard University. The bacteria are eating, growing, and multiplying. Along the way, they're also mutating and evolving. The evolution of bugs on the Megaplate, it turns out, mirrors real life. Every single antibiotic that has been introduced medically so far, bacteria found ways to evade it. Every single one? Every single one. Roy Cashoni and his colleagues are using the Megaplate to try to understand just how antibiotic resistance evolves and how some bacteria are evolving into superbugs. Evolution is a smart process, and <laughs> these bacteria win by the numbers. Cashoni and his team have some pretty impressive numbers of their own. In September, they posted a video of their experiment. It's been viewed close to 25 million times. So after you uh, released the, this video with your scientific study, it, it, it took off. I mean, it went viral. For a video to go viral is not very different than the evolution that you see on these plates. There are selection forces that amplify and make one bacterium becoming two, becoming four, make one video of you becoming two, becoming four. One single bacterium out of the billions that are standing there mutate in a way that allowed it to become resistant. So to be able to facilitate that process in the lab, we need billions of bacteria to assure that maybe one or few of them would actually be the lucky ones. You might get lucky growing bacteria in a normal petri dish, but compare it against the megaplate and you can see why the experiment worked. So where did he get the idea for it? The credit all goes to Hollywood of all places. There's this uh, movie, uh, Contagion. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. And for that movie, Hollywood did uh, a billboard, which was essentially this gigantic plate with bacteria going on it. They used it for marketing, but Kashoni thought a billboard-sized bacterial battlefield could contribute to science. He enlisted two members of his lab, Michael Baim and Tammy Lieberman, to make one. I love how the process of this looks. At first, their megaplate kept getting contaminated, ruining the experiment. You build this contraption. It's a disaster. It stinks. You have to throw it out. Exactly. Why do you then keep doing it? We just felt that, hey, this is uh, a device that no one has built before. Let's make it work and see what happens. And the first time it worked, uh, we were like, uh, oh my god. Here's what you're looking at. They pour a smooth slab of agar, stuff for the bugs to grow on, inside the megaplate. It's divided up into zones, each with a different level of deadly antibiotics. They drop a few bacteria at the ends where there are no antibiotics. The bugs multiply and expand like a wave. Then they hit the first antibiotic zone. There's enough of the drug there to stop them. But then mutants arise that can withstand the dose. The mutants create new waves that reach the next zone. Now they encounter 10 times more of the antibiotics, then 100 times, then a thousand. The whole journey takes them 11 days. Kashoni and his colleagues then plucked mutants from all along the megaplate and recorded their mutations. It took remarkably few mutations to produce the most resistant bugs. You can actually map in a very systematic way all the different uh, possibilities available for the bug to become resistant. We can predict what will happen before it happens. So it's kind of give us a way to uh, anticipate the future. Kashoni and his colleagues hope to use this mutation map to predict the future of antibiotic resistance. And if they can do that, they may be able to improve the treatments doctors give for infections. They're not quite there yet. The Megaplate experiment was just the beginning. But we have an antibiotic crisis on our hands right now. Antibiotics has really changed the course of medical history. It's likely the most important medical innovation of all times estimated to have saved the life of some hundreds of millions of people. We became very dependent on these drugs and we need to be very thoughtful in how we use them. When we come together globally to, to address this problem, we're going to prevail. But we're going to prevail also by reminding ourselves that in this relationship between bacteria and human, it's us that depend on them at the end of the day, much more than they depend on us.